Hello, and I'm Mitch with Acronym. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to get started with the hub deployment package that is contained in our open source LabVIEW API project. The first thing you'll need to do is download Acronym's public GitHub account. This can be done by cloning the project via Git, or you could zipply download the zipped folder. For this video, I will be working with the downloaded zip file. I've already downloaded these files and extracted them to my desktop. As you can see, when we download the project, we got a bunch of other stuff as well. Let's dig into the LabVIEW API folder. Here you will find two folders in a readme file. Let's navigate to the deploy package, which can be found by entering the LabVIEW BS project folder and then opening the deploy folder. At this point, you should be looking at a folder called build hub. This folder contains everything you need to start developing a VI that will communicate with one or more of our hubs. All other files contained in this download are specifically for development and can be disregarded. If you were following along, let's go ahead and keep them for now. Let's step into this folder. This folder contains three very important parts. First, the brainstem2.dll. This is a direct copy of the DLL that ships in our brainstem2.3.1 package. It's capable of talking to our devices, but cannot talk directly to LabVIEW. That is where the LabVIEW testing.dll comes in. This DLL can be thought of as an interpreter between the brainstem2.dll and LabVIEW. Finally, we have the Brainstem for LabVIEW Hubs pack library, which contains the exposed API functions for the USB Hub 2x4 and USB Hub 3P. Let's open this library and have a look. Once open, you will notice five items, two of which are the DLLs we have already discussed. The other items are the connect and disconnect folder. This folder houses the VIs that will be needed to open and close connection to the Brainstem hub. Inside this folder, you will notice that there are two different types of connects and one disconnect. It is important to select the proper connection VI for your device. However, the delete disconnect is common for all devices. The next new section is entities. This contains the exposed entities for our hubs. These entities are exactly the same as the ones listed in our C++ and Python APIs. Further documentation for these entities can be found in our Brainstem reference guide at acronym.com reference. The final section is examples, which should be self-explanatory. From here, you can create new VIs and start dragging and dropping blocks just as you would with any other LabVIEW program. But let's take a step back and go through a few of the examples first. As a quick reference, these examples are handy. I've even left the show block diagram exposed under the Windows folder. Here you'll find more comments and explanation for how the program works. The problem is, is you cannot make changes to these VIs or even copy and paste them to a new VI. Therefore, I'm going to drop back to the project level to make things a little easier. If you would like to follow along, you will need to copy the brainstem2.dll from the deploy hub build folder into the brainstem dll import folder. Once that is complete, you can now open the main project folder and navigate to the examples. Let's have a look at the LED toggle VI first. This example is very simple and is the LabVIEW equivalent to the basic brainstem example that ships with our development kit for C++ and Python. In fact, let's compare side to side. Looking at the Python example, we can see that the first thing we do is create a stem object. In this case, a USB stem. We then look for and connect via the discovery and connect function. On the LabVIEW side, we handle this with a single VI via the connect to USB hub 2x4. Next on the Python side, we toggle the LED by setting it. This is done by determining if the iterator is odd or even. In LabVIEW, we do the exact same thing with the added step of getting the LED value from the device so that we can drive the LED on the front panel. One other difference that I skipped over between the Python and LabVIEW examples is the get serial number function. Let's go ahead and modify this VI and add that functionality. First, I need to make room between the connect and the loop. Next, I'm going to disconnect the lines so that I can connect a new block between them. Now I can drop the system entity get serial number function on the block diagram and wire it up. In order to display this value, I will need to add a numeric indicator on the front panel. Now I just need to wire it in. I can get the value by unbundling the cluster. Let's run this and see how that works. As you can see, we get a weird value, but this is only because of how we are displaying this value. We can fix this by changing the indicator's representation from double to an unsigned 32-bit integer. 
Before we move on to the next example, I should probably explain the basic structure to these VIs. As you just saw in this example, each brainstem VI has an in-out cluster. This cluster is used for passing parameters in and out of each VI, and for retrieving any errors that may have taken place. They can be accessed by the use of LabVIEW's unbundle function. These connections are optional. Additionally, each VI has an ID in-out. Under the hood, the API keeps a list of all active devices and their configurations. This ID is used to locate the device in this list. The connection is required and should be done in a sequential fashion. Lastly, each VI also has an error in out. This is LabVIEW's basic error handling and is not required, but could be helpful when working with large VIs. This is our port toggle example and is fairly close to our basic USB hub example. The example starts off like the other by locating and connecting to the first device it finds. If you are working with more than one brainstem device, you will want to specify the serial number by wiring up the SN input. After connecting to the device, the example will begin by disabling all the ports. I have included delays so that you can see them cascade, along with an additional delay once they have all been disabled. Next, all the ports are then re-enabled. An additional delay was also added to allow the user to follow along. It also serves the double purpose of allowing the voltage and currents to stabilize. The final section gets the port voltage and current for each downstream port and passes it to the correct indicator via the switch statement. Before I run this example, I'm going to make a few timing modifications as the devices I'm using in this example have long boot up times. Let's run this and see how it works. There you have it, Brainstem and LabVIEW working together. I hope this walkthrough of our LabVIEW API hub deployment package was helpful. If you have any other questions, feature requests, or if you're interested in becoming a contributor to the LabVIEW API project, please contact us at support at Thank you.